Next on our agenda, we will move on to digitalization roadmap for MFIs. Let me briefly describe the biography of Mr. Cameron Gordy Scott. Cameron is the CEO and co-founder of Musoni, a leading digitalization partner for microfinance institutions around the world, helping them to improve operational efficiency while offering new services for their clients. His goal is to revolutionize the way financial services are delivered across the globe, and in doing so, to improve the lives of the end bank. Musoni is working across 18 countries with a focus on Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia and have won numerous prizes for social impact and financial inclusion. I would like to invite Mr. Cameron Goldie Scott to share his view and vision on digitalization roadmap for MFINs. Thank you very much and good afternoon, everyone. I think that everyone here knows Masoni, so I won't do the standard company introduction. Uh, instead, in this presentation, I'd like to look at what it takes for an MFI to digitalize their operations. I'll look at why it's necessary, how to put together a digitalization strategy, what the common pitfalls are, and how Masoni can support the process. First, though, a quick look at our experience in Myanmar. Since launching here in 2017 and working with Heyman Microfinance since 2015, we're very proud to have become the leading software provider to microfinance organizations in Myanmar. And we think that over 10% of all of the microfinance borrowers, borrowers in the country are actually managed through our solutions. We couldn't have done this without the support of TeacherWorks and their fantastic team. Uh, so I'd like to thank them again for organizing this conference today. So why is digitalization important? There are many reasons, ranging from improving efficiency and increasing revenue to keeping up with changing customer expectations and responding to market competition. For a lot of this presentation, I will refer to data from an excellent survey carried out recently by Bio, the Belgian microfinance investor. They interviewed all of their portfolio organizations to assess their readiness for digitalization, and the results are really interesting. And we're showing a couple of the, the graphics on this slide here. What's clear is that if digitalization was a high priority topic for MFIs before the global health crisis, COVID-19 and all of the social distancing requirements that came in uh, as a result of COVID-19 have only made it more urgent. And this makes sense. Whether financial institutions are able to communicate with their clients, continue making recoveries, continue doing loan origination, all of that depends mainly on their level of digitalization. It therefore makes sense that digitalization and innovation are currently the top priority for all of the MFIs surveyed. And you can see this in the, the top graph uh, uh, with MFIs ranking their strategic priorities. Uh, digitalization came ahead of market expansion and even increasing customer centricity. And yet, in spite of this, very few MFIs have yet digitalized. And we can see this in the second graph, which clearly shows that, that actually it's banks that are the real champions of digitalization. From mobile wallets to digital loans, commercial banks are ahead of microfinance organizations. They lead on agency banking and also on communication channels. One of the reasons for this divide between banks and MFIs becomes apparent um, when you listen to the feedback from the financial organizations uh, reporting their challenges for digitalization. 100% of the organizations reported that they had a challenge with a digitalization knowledge gap and lacked the skilled staff to manage digitalization. So uh, HR challenges effectively. 59% also highlighted weaknesses of their IT system, which is something we're gonna focus a little bit more on today. And almost half of them struggled with a lack of funding for digitalization projects and a similar number faced regulatory challenges. As a result, for many microfinance organizations, their digital products were still not, uh, are still not very developed. MFIs are held back by legacy IT systems and a lack of, um, uh, a lack of internal expertise, and they don't have funding to address these two issues. And this is where at Masoni we try and help a little bit. We try and make it easier for MFIs to overcome these challenges. Our recommended starting point for any MFI is to put together a, a digitalization strategy. Uh, even though we're a technology vendor, we see the technology itself is nothing more than the tool that you use to digitalize once you have the right foundations and strategy in place. 
and your strategy will always start off with a digitalization readiness review. This would look at all the key factors that you need to consider when digitalizing, whether it's country readiness, the customer readiness, organizational readiness, and finally, the tech readiness. Um, and actually, our team can do a free digitalization readiness review for your organization. But you can also do it yourself. And to make it easier for you to do it yourself, I wanted to share a little bit more on the approach that we normally take. The starting point for us is always to assess what digitalization options are available in the country we're working in. And in Myanmar, it's easy. There are lots of options. Uh, as we know, smartphone ownership is high and internet connectivity is generally uh, very good. End customers are becoming more familiar with mobile wallets and MCIX, the Credit Reference Bureau, uh, has just celebrated its, uh, its two year birthday. Uh, Mojo Loop, who we'll hear from later today, is also launching uh, in production uh, early next year. So it's a really exciting time uh, and it puts MFIs in Myanmar in a strong place to start their digitalization journey. From our perspective, the country is, is not holding any MFI back here. What about the end customers? Well, we would normally ask an organization how they currently interact with their end customers. And my guess is that most organizations still use a group meeting methodology with clients generally going through their loan officer for any question that they have for the microfinance organization. Um, but this is changing. Customer familiarity with digital channels is, uh, is rapidly improving. And as an example of this, we know that just last month, Easy Microfinance launched their own mobile banking application, immediately changing the prime channel for any customer communication. And we think that a lot of MFIs in the country are gonna, are gonna follow uh, in the very near future for this. So as part of your, um, your customer readiness research, we recommend asking your customers how many of them already use digital wallets. What do they use them for? Maybe it's paying bills, maybe it's um, transferring money to a friend or family member. Or maybe they also bank with other financial organizations, whether it's microfinance organizations or banks. Uh, if so, I recommend finding out how they interact with them uh, and what they like and don't like. Most important, arguably, as putting, well, for putting together a digitalization strategy anyway, is assessing your organizational readiness. We know from the survey that, that I showed the results from earlier that the HR and lack of sufficient expertise it's the number one reason that MFI cite for a lack of digitalization. And we see this time and time again, the main difference between successful digitalization projects like uh, at Vision Fund, at Heyman Microfinance or at Proximity Finance, the main difference is the strength of the senior management teams and the shared commitment across all of the leadership to digitalization. We know that digitalization will result in major changes to business, whether that's in operations, reporting or in finance and people in, in general they, they don't like change uh, i don't like change however well intentioned it is uh, and this is why it's key for any mfi to have really strong leaders committed to digitalization and helping each organization to accept and buy into the changes i i'm sorry but also digitalization does not come cheaply uh, i don't think masoni is expensive but investing in technology training change management uh, and team management, but all of that costs money and it takes time. And it may be a number of years before the investments in digitalization really start paying off. MFIs need to be aware of this and assign sufficient resources to any digitalization project from the start. So another key question we ask whenever we're doing a readiness review is, do you have a digitalization budget in place? Finally, tech readiness. The most important thing to look for here is how easy is it for you to connect your existing core banking system with either other internal systems, such as accounting or reporting, or third-party solutions like, uh, like MCIX, for example, uh, or Mojoloop. Uh, we believe that the future of digitalization will be multiple different solutions working seamlessly together. And if your core banking system does not make it easy for you to integrate with these different solutions, then you're going to be facing an uphill journey from the start. Going back to the survey of microfinance organizations, we can see some of the challenges that the industry as a whole is facing. More than a third of financial institutions operate with most or all of their IT systems completely separated, and only 29% have managed to integrate all of them. When connecting to third party systems, the situation is only a little bit better. 13% of MFIs cannot connect their core banking system to any third party system, 
And for another 46%, the integrations require either major or medium-sized investments. Only 42% of financial institutions have integrate, integration-ready systems, like Missoni, in place. Excuse me. Conducting a readiness review, therefore, is the first stage in putting together your digitalization strategy. Um, and we've covered a little bit, I hope we've covered a little bit, on how Missoni would normally help an MFI to conduct a digitalization readiness review. So I'm going to take a step back now and share some more results from the survey, looking at how ready are other organizations around the world, other MFIs looking to digitalize. Strikingly, not many of them have even the basic enablers for digitalization in place. While almost all have a supportive management, 22% of them do not have a dedicated team, and 33% do not have a dedicated budget, even though almost everyone does see the need in doing so. Most noteworthy, though, or most concerningly, is that while everyone has rushed to introduce elements of digital innovation, not everyone knows where they're headed. 40% of the respondents do not actually have a digitalization strategy in place. This is a concern, I think, but there's also no better time to start than today. Uh, and hopefully we've, we've shared a little bit about how to put together a digitalization strategy. So where does Missoni fit in? Well, we have over a decade of experience in helping microfinance organizations to digitalize. And while every journey is different, there are similarities between all of them. Here you can see what we see as the standard journey for digitalization that we try and help MFIs to go through. And we believe that with our solutions, any MFI can go from not digital at all to fully digital in just 18 months. Unsurprisingly, this starts off with a core banking system, a modern core banking system. Your core banking system is the beating heart of your company's technology, and the top systems should make it easy for you to innovate in the market and are therefore the key starting point to any ongoing digitalization that you do. However, changing your core banking system can be a really daunting exercise. Um, and not many people know where to start, and not many people are comfortable jumping into the process. So in this presentation, I'd, I'd also like to share what we see as the top four criteria that any MFI could look for when choosing their, their core banking partner. The first is strategic fit. Does the vendor's model and direction, does their solution align with the digitalization strategy that you have just put together for your organization? The second is trust. Do I trust this vendor? to help me achieve my strategy. I think it's worth uh, to establishing trust or working out if you can establish this trust, chat with other customers who are using the, the provider or choose a vendor who has a lot of experience either in your market or in your region. Price, uh, there are lots of different pricing models in the core banking system uh, kind of solutions out there. Um, and so you need to look at, does this pricing model work for me? And, and obviously, does it fit in with my digitalization budget that I've been uh, that I've been hammering finance for? And finally, what makes the vendor unique? Uh, every provider is obviously different, um, and at Missoni, we try and be different by not just being another vendor. We like to take a personal, hands-on approach, uh, and our goal is actually to to be a digitalization partner, um, standing next to each MFI as they go through the digitalization journey, uh, rather than just saying goodbye the moment we've signed the contract. So once you have the right modern, easy to integrate core banking system in place, then it's straightforward to take the next steps, starting with the digitalization of your manual uh, paper-based processes. The first organization who did this really well was Vision Fund. After identifying that a digital field application was a core part of their strategy, they started testing the standard version provided by Missoni in December 2019. They launched a pilot with one branch at the start of 2020, and within just eight weeks, they'd rolled out the DFA to the entire organization. To ensure the success of the project, they implemented multiple surveys. They had a feedback circle between the end users and the digitalization team. And where necessary, they carried out refresher training to increase the loan officer familiarity with the solution. All of this was done in the middle of COVID-19. They also worked closely with Missoni to fix any problems in the DFA and to let us know about new functionality that they'd like to see. So it was a really, really nice example of first having the digitalization strategy, having a, a clear plan on, on how to implement that strategy, working closely with the vendor, uh, and uh, none of it would have been possible without the strength and commitment of the senior management team, the leadership within Vision Fund, uh, the organization. 
And since finishing this project, since launching with VFM, we've also seen similar successful projects with Heyman Microfinance and Proximity Finance, demonstrating that, that once you have a good system in place, you can start your digitalization journey very, very quickly. Another key part of most organizations' strategy is leveraging the increased mobile phone ownership of your customers. And with Missoni, we try and make this easy. Our SMS module works across all networks in Myanmar language, and is really useful for improving communication with your end customers. Vision funds are currently using our API to integrate with MPT money, while Proximity have used them to accept payments through Ongo. We're also working with Vision Fund, who have uh, who've been instrumental in, in driving the project with Mojuloop, uh, and hopefully we'll hear a little bit more about that later today. Beyond SMS and mobile payments, the future is also likely to include uh, mobile or client-facing banking applications. Missoni's client-facing application is fully integrated into the core banking system and enables clients to view their accounts, to check their balances, to transfer funds, and to make loan applications as well. And it all works straight out of the box. You could get started tomorrow. However, if an MFI wanted more than this, they could also develop their own mobile banking application and integrate it with Missoni using our APIs. To make this easier, we're also planning to open source our, the, the code for our banking application and therefore to make it easier for any MFI wanting to build on top of it to customize it themselves. Finally, it's also possible to integrate a third party solution directly into Missoni using our APIs. One recent integration that we've been piloting has been with a new company called Mobi for Me, and I've got a couple of screenshots on the slide here. They've developed their own mobile banking application for end customers. It's already been translated into Myanmar language, and it's been integrated on one of the Missoni demo environments. So any MFI in Myanmar could start testing that and comparing it to other systems in the market straight away. Finally, um, and I won't talk too much about MCIX because it will be covered a little bit later, but another way in which we make it quick and easy for MFIs to digitalize is the real-time integration with MCIX. We were the first core banking system to fully automate the integration, and it's now possible to receive real-time information from MCIX during the loan application process. And we're really, really excited about it. So to summarize, at Missoni, we help microfinance organizations to achieve their digitalization strategy quickly and affordably. However, it's still key for the organization to have their own strategy in place. Um, but at least with us, the technology bit of the puzzle is taken care of. We'll hear a bit more from them later today, but to show that it really is possible to digitalize in less than 18 months, I wanted to showcase proximity finance. Having launched Missoni in March, they automated their loan decisions using our credit checks in July. They launched a digital field application to 400 loan officers in August. They're now testing the MCIX integration and running a pilot with Ongo to digitalize their cash repayments. All of this in under 12 months during one of the most difficult operating environments with COVID-19 that any of us have ever seen. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to hearing Sam's presentation a little bit later on how they managed to achieve it, what went right and, and what went wrong, because there are always challenges. So to finish, I think we all understand the importance of digitalization, and I hope I've explained a little bit about uh, how we would recommend putting together a digitalization strategy and how we can support on the technology side. I'd like to finish with the final 30 seconds of the keynote speech at last year's European Microfinance Week, delivered by Graham Wright, who's one of the leading experts in microfinance in the world. We are not able to hear some camera. Can we see? Okay, and thank you very much again, and thank you to, uh, to Kony and the entire FutureWorks team for putting together this fantastic event. Thank you, Cameron. Uh, may I interject for one second? Uh, Cameron, uh, we didn't hear the sound of the video. Uh, perhaps ah, okay. <laughs> give us a very short summary of uh, what it was said. <laughs> well, I, I will share it afterwards as well, um, but um, it was effectively saying that the digital age is upon us, 
um, whether we are individuals, whether we are a bank, a microfinance organization, or just personally, we have to, we have to board that train now. Uh, if we don't, uh, then in a number of years time, we will, uh, we will have missed, missed the opportunity. Uh, and in short, to survive, microfinance organizations have to digitize or die. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you, Cameron, for your precious time and sharing with us. Now we